Now, where we're going to go next is into the idea of enumerating distributions. So a basic enumeration problem is this. Given a set of M objects and N cells, boxes, bins, locations, etc., how many ways can they be distributed? But then there are side constraints. Are the objects distinct? Can you tell the difference between them? Or are they identical? You can't tell the difference. Are the cells different? Or are they somehow blurred? Uh, are, do you have any constraints about how many objects go in cells? Are empty cells allowed or not allowed? Uh, do you have bounds? Is, uh, must a cell get at least three and at most 12 objects? These kinds of constraints. Now, just to, to make this a little bit more concrete, let me give you an example of distinct versus non-distinct. If I come in with a batch of books, and each book is different, and I go, give you a couple of books, and I give you a book or two, and I don't like you today, I don't give you any book, and I, I really don't like you, because you, 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 you found my 21. <laughs> and, okay, so I do. I'm assuming these are individuals, and we can tell the difference between them. And I already told you in advance that I came in with a stack of books with all the books being different. Distinct objects, distinct bins. I'm placing objects in bins, but they're all distinct. I come in with a stack of dollar bills. I guess technically the dollar bills have serial numbers on them, but no, nobody cares about that. They care about the amount. So I come in with a stack of, of money, and I gave him $35. He doesn't look at the serial numbers. He just wants to see the 35. And I gave him 50. Now, I can tell the difference between the individuals. The bins are different. But the objects are the same. It's all about amounts. How many did you get? And you can make up lots of examples. Uh, paper clips. You open up a box of paper clips. They all look alike. So if you start passing them out, those are non-distinct objects. It's how many paper clips do you get. That's what matters. Okay, now, does it matter about bins? Well, yeah, okay, I can make a pile. I make a pile, and then I can shuffle the piles, like they do with the Braves baseball game, where they start shuffling the hats, the peanuts under a... You can't, Okay, so maybe I can shuffle the bins, but you can't tell any difference between the bins. So two red ones in this one and one blue one in this one is the same as two red ones in this one and one blue one in this one. So we'll have these kinds of things. And then whether you're allowed to have an empty cell or not a cell, or whether you're going to have upper and lower bounds, like you must have some objects in this one, or I'm allowing you to not, because it's fundamentally different. If I come in here in a stack of bills, and in my case, it won't be a very big stack, and the requirement is that everybody has to get one, I'm not sure that I have enough money to do that. Okay? Now, now I've got to have a lot of bills just to meet the basic requirement that everybody's got to get one. And one of the things that we're going to learn right away is that these binomial coefficients that we've started to study are going to show up over and over again, and they're going to play important roles in these enumeration problems. All right, we have about four minutes left today, and in that time, I'm going to show you how to solve one of these enumeration problems using nothing more than binomial coefficients. And that is this.
distinct bins, non-distinct objects, no empty bins. And here's the way we're going to do it. You'll see how, just how easy this is. Now this is my attempt to draw an apple. And I'll probably not convince you that they are non-distinct, but this is a bunch of apples. And you can't tell the difference between apples. Got the idea? So I've just got some objects. I can't tell the difference between them, but now I've got four bins. And I really can't tell the difference between the bins. So I'm going to distribute those apples into four bins, but every bin is going to get at least one apple. How can I do that? And here's what I want you to see. What you do is choose gaps. Choose a gap, another gap, and another gap. There are four bins. Choose three gaps. Choose one less gap than there are bins. Then these apples go in bin one. These apples go in bin 2, these apples go in bin 3, and these apples go in bin 4. So how many gaps do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I have one less gap than I have objects. So if I have M objects and N bins, I have M minus 1 gaps, and I choose N minus 1 of them. And that's the answer. That's all there is to it. That's pretty slick, isn't it? So, first problem solved. But look at the special conditions. Distinct bins, non-distinct objects, no empty bins allowed. As I change those parameters, the problems will get harder. Okay, look online for material from Lecture 1 and Lecture 2, maybe a couple of corrections, and I will see you next Tuesday.